Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Philippians. Here Paul is in prison, and this is part of a letter that he is writing to the believers in Philippi to encourage them. We will be reading uh, chapter 1, verses 12 to 14, 20 to 26, and we will follow that with Galatians 2.20 and Romans 15.13. I want to report to you, friends, that my imprisonment here has had the opposite of its intended effect. Instead of being squelched, the message has actually prospered. All the soldiers here and everyone else, too, found out that I'm in jail because of this Messiah. That piqued their curiosity, and now they've learned all about him. Not only that, but most of the followers of Jesus here have become far more sure of themselves in the faith than ever, speaking out fearlessly about God, about the Messiah. I can hardly wait to continue on my course. I don't expect to be embarrassed in the least. On the contrary, everything happening to me in this jail only serves to make Christ more accurately known. Regardless of whether I live or die, they didn't shut me up, they gave me a platform. Alive, I'm Christ's messenger. Dead, I'm his prize. Life versus even more life, I can't lose. As long as I'm alive in this body, there is good work for me to do. If I had to choose right now, I hardly know which I'd choose. Hard choice. The desire to break camp here and be with Christ is powerful. Some days I can think of nothing better. But most days, because of what you are going through, I am sure that it's better for me to stick it out here. So I plan to be around a while, a companion to you as your growth and joy in this life of trusting God continues. You can start looking forward to a great reunion when I come visit you again. We'll be praising Christ, enjoying each other. And from Galatians, I have been crucified with Christ and no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And from Romans 15, 13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Today in the Christian Church, we celebrate the second Sunday of Eastertide, which is sometimes called the season of joy. I am so happy to be bringing the message today because Easter is my favorite holiday. I love the coming of spring, the warmer weather, the Easter colors, the beauty and the fragrance of the flowers. I love singing my favorite Easter hymn. All these things remind me of God's promise of salvation and eternal life, and that fills me with hope and joy. However, each year I also feel a letdown after Easter. The blooms and fragrance from my hyacinths fade. The Easter baskets and decorations get packed away. There are no more Easter hymns sung on Sunday mornings. And the days fade away into that same old, same old routine. The world starts creeping back into my days, and much of what I see and hear is not joyful. The news is depressing. Life is difficult. There are wars and unrest and grief and financial instability. It doesn't take much for the sadness and worry to take over. It's hard to pull ourselves out of the dull drums, as my grandmother used to say, and find our happy place. For a minute, try to imagine what it was like for the disciples during that first Holy Week. The days between Palm Sunday and Easter 
were like riding a roller coaster. Jesus and his disciples enter Jerusalem and they are received joyously with waving palms and shouts of Hosanna. They're on the way up. Then Jesus tells his disciples that in a few days he will be killed. And they go down. At the same time that Jesus is teaching, which is an up, the religious leaders, government officials, and even one of his own disciples are plotting to kill him. And they go down. Jesus and his disciples share a very intimate time in the upper room. And they're going up. Then he reminds them that he will be arrested, tried, and crucified. And they will abandon him. And that was a downer. The disciples struggle with denial and sadness and fear. Jesus is arrested, tried, and crucified. All their hopes and dreams are shattered. They fear for their lives. They feel lost, alone, and afraid. And they are going down, down, down. But then comes the good news of Easter Sunday. Jesus is alive. Is it true? Can it be? Then Jesus appears to them and fills them with the Holy Spirit. And that was a major upper. But then Jesus leaves them after 40 days. Now it's all up to them to spread the gospel. Their lives will not be easy. Most of them died for their faith. This sure sounds like a downward to me. But to them, it wasn't. Why? Because now they were filled with Easter joy. In our reading from Philippians, even though Paul is in prison, he's giving thanks. Because of his imprisonment, the guards and the others in the prison were hearing the gospel. The news is spreading. Whether he lived or died, he was exalting Christ. His message was, I will either live my earthly life serving Christ, or even better yet, leave my earthly life and live with Christ forever. It would be a win-win. And this reminds me of a true story that I would like to share with you. Not long after I started attending church here, Barb Drawlinger and I were becoming friends. I'm sure she won't mind if I tell this story because she has told it many times. Barb, if you're listening, forgive me. Barb stood up in church one Sunday and asked the congregation to pray for her because she was preparing to have weight loss surgery. After the service was over, the two of us sat in the back of the sanctuary and talked. Barb shared with me that she was nervous because she had heard or read that sometimes people die during weight loss surgery. Knowing I was a nurse, she asked me my opinion about what she should do. Should she have the surgery or not? I sensed that she wasn't really asking for medical information, but rather the unspoken question was, what if I don't wake up? So I gave her my honest answer double barrel. I said, one of two things is going to happen. Either you are going to wake up in the recovery room and your procedure will be over and you will be on your way to recovery. Or you will wake up in heaven with your new perfect body and you'll be looking into the face of Jesus with no more care about earthly things. I wish you could have seen her face. At first, she was kind of shocked by my bluntness because it wasn't what she was expecting to hear. But then she recovered and realized that she didn't have to be afraid because either way, it was a win-win. She would either survive and have a successful surgery or, putting her barb spin on it, she'd wake up in heaven and immediately have the slender body she desired without having to do all the hard work to get there. And from that moment on, she would know nothing but joy. Her fears and worries would be forever gone. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Win, win. 
Our scripture from Galatians talked about being crucified with Christ. Exactly what does that mean? Before we were born, Jesus went to the cross and our sins went with him. We are no longer condemned. We became one with him and he lives in us and that was our first resurrection day. And because we were resurrected with him, Easter joy lives in us. It's right in here. All the time, whether we're paying attention to it or not, it's there. And it is this joy that gives us hope and power and strength to face any situation. Now, please don't misunderstand what I am saying. There is a huge difference between joy and happiness. None of us are happy all of the time. Our happiness is usually influenced by what's going on around us. Happiness often depends on our circumstances. Bad things and stresses can steal our happiness, but not our joy, because that comes from being a follower of Jesus. Christ's joy is greater than our sadness. It helps us to put things into perspective. It allows us to deal with situations without becoming totally overwhelmed because we know we are not alone. We know that no matter what the world throws at us, we're going to be okay. Because as a child of God, we constantly live in that win-win situation. Our greatest joy comes from being with Christ, whether that's here on earth or in heaven. God's got us in the palm of his hand. And as long as we don't get distracted or lose our focus, as long as we keep him first and remember who we belong to, we can still find joy in spite of our circumstances. Now, we said that we had our first resurrection when Christ went to the cross. But there's more. When our human bodies die, our souls will rise to the Lord. We will join Christ and all of our beloved saints in heaven. And that will be our second and final resurrection day. There are no words to describe that other than that we will finally reach that ultimate and everlasting Easter joy. Now I know I've talked a lot about death today, but I promise you that this message is meant to lift you up. Do you keep Easter joy in your heart? Not just at Easter, but all year long? Imagine what Jesus was feeling on that Easter morning. He defeated Satan and sin for everyone forever. He brought the message to us about how to get to heaven. And now he was ascending to his Father to take his place of glory next to God and getting busy preparing places for us when we get there. So, it's the Sunday after Easter. Where do we go from here? I found some answers when I was reading about what the disciples did after the resurrection, or crucifixion, excuse me. Some of them were skeptical, and they heard Jesus had risen. Even after seeing him, they weren't sure what was going on, what was going to happen. Before Jesus left them on Easter evening, he had told them to wait. Wait for him. They were probably wondering, wait for what? Sometimes when we aren't sure what to do, we turn to something that is familiar. In John 21, we read that Peter decided to go fishing. That's what he knew how to do. So he went and the rest of his disciples, the disciples followed him. So where do we go from here? Turning to familiar things can help us if we are feeling overwhelmed or go through sudden changes that are too much to deal with. Find something that feels familiar, that has a feeling of normalcy. When our son died, the only thing in my world right then that felt familiar was taking care of my horses. Just like Peter turned to fishing, I turned to barn chores because it was the only thing that I was capable of doing at the time. 
It was the only normal feeling in my life. And even though I believed I'd never be happy again, I found joy working in my barn and being with the horses that I loved. And that joy was a gift from God. It's okay to have doubts about what will happen, but hang on to your faith and find something each day, even if it's small, to be joyful about. Keep busy serving God while you're waiting for him to show you the next step. When Jesus appeared to the disciples in Galilee, they worshipped together. So where do we go from here? Worshiping God helps us keep our joy and hope alive, even if we're dealing with life issues that make us feel unhappy. Keep worshiping God. The disciples shared the communion meal together to remember Jesus. Acts 2.45 says they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. So where do we go from here? We don't have to be in church to have communion. Have your own communion time at home and know the joy that Jesus loved you so much that he died for you. Two followers met Jesus on the road to Emmaus and listened to his teaching. His words opened their eyes and they knew they were in the presence of the risen Christ. After they ran to tell the others that they had been with Jesus, they studied their scriptures to find explanations for the extraordinary events of the day. So where do we go from here? Keep reading scripture. Read it with a sense of eagerness and anticipation of finding new understanding and guidance. Keep reading it over and over until you do. It feeds our souls and it gives us encouragement. The disciples follow Jesus' command to heal the sick. Matthew 10, 1 says, Heal every disease and every affliction. So where do we go from here? Help people. And if they ask you why you are helping them, you can say, I'm helping you because God told me to. And your helping may very well bring them some healing. How can we heal others? One way is to get involved in mission work, volunteer at a hospital or a nursing home, or agencies like the Red Cross or UMCOR. Support the MS walk, work at a food pantry, take meals to someone in need. There are endless ways that you can heal the sick. And finally, the disciples invited others into their fellowship. Peter's sermons brought thousands of new converts into the church. So where do we go from here? Be welcoming. Invite people to church. And invite them to a home Bible study. Offer to pick them up. Offer to lead a group so that we have somewhere to go for Bible study. Easter joy allows us to stay together as a family, to help our neighbors, to serve others, to give our time, talents, and treasure to the church. What brings the most joy in your life? If you made an Easter joy list, what would you put on it? Easter joy is bigger than your family, your possessions, your greatest dreams coming true. It is the biggest joy any one of us can ever experience. So, what would be on your list? Or, who would be on your list? Would you put down Christ's resurrection? Shouldn't that be number one on all of our lists? I would encourage you all to make a joy list and write on it often. Anytime you feel that joy starting to slip away, recite some of your favorite Bible verses that give you encouragement. Some of mine are, Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you in my victorious right hand. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. 
I have called you by name. You are mine. Easter isn't over. When the blooms fade on the flowers, when we stop singing our favorite Easter songs, or when the sanctuary flowers and decorations are taken down. Easter joy doesn't have to end unless we allow it to end. It's a choice. The disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. Their ministry wasn't over just because Jesus was no longer with them. They were just getting started. And we are filled with the Holy Spirit as well. And our ministry is never over. If you look at your bulletin after the post week, and also on the last screen of the worship PowerPoint each week, you will see the words, and now our service begins. That should be our mantra every morning. Let's claim our Easter joy and live with it in our hearts every day. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen?